What's up, 7th grade? Mr. Agnos here. In this video, I'm going to do three problems from homework 4-2G to help you guys out. Okay, for this homework assignment, we are um, adding um, integers, which basically just means adding positive and negative numbers. And there's um, three different types of questions you're going to see on your homework. Um, Another purpose of this video is also going to be just to get you comfortable with working with digits because um, it can be confusing. Um, I'll also show you some of the features like question help, um, how to use these drop down boxes, uh, make sure you're finished answering the question, and so on. Okay, in this, uh, we're going to do three questions. Question number one says complete the statement below, then use a number line to find the sum 5 plus negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that a little bigger. That's sort of the main goal here, is, is to figure out what is 5 plus negative 3. Now some of you may be wizards at, at, at this already and know exactly what the answer is. But a lot of all this stuff right here is, are teaching tools. They don't mean like, hey, this is the way you're going to do it every time. This is to help students who are struggling to sort of get an idea of, of what's happening here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a number line. I'll make a number line down here, and I'm going to put 0 in the middle. And we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Um, I'm not going to put every number. I'll just put every fifth number. And then this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. If I, if I put every number in here, it gets a little cluttered. Okay. So there's my number line, and I'll even put negative 6 over here. And the first thing we're going to do is find our starting point. So our starting point is 5. I'm going to go to 5, and I'm going to put a nice big dot there. That's where we're going to start. Now we're adding a negative number. If I were adding a positive number, and I will use green for positive, we would move this direction. That is way too big. If we were adding a positive number, we're going to go what's called in the positive direction. We would keep moving to the right. If we're going to add a negative number, then we would move to the left. This is called moving in the negative direction. So in this case, because we're adding a negative 3, we know that we're going to be heading backwards. Essentially, when you add a negative number, it's the same as subtract. Okay, so I'm going to start at 5, and I'm going to move in the negative direction 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And so we're going to end up back here at, let's see now it's too small, at positive 2. So 5 plus negative 3 is positive 2. Notice that 5 plus negative 3, that's exactly the same as 5 minus 3, because that is also equal to 2. When you add a negative, it's the same as subtracting. All right, <clears throat> well, that's not exactly what they uh, Let's go ahead and make sure we, we, we fill out this question, the answer to this question correctly. It says 5 plus negative 3 is how many units from 5 in what direction? Well, we went 1, 2, 3, so it's 3 units from 5, in the, and I hit the drop-down menu, in the negative direction. So that's how they want us to answer the first part of the question. Um, I go ahead and click on Check Answer. Nice work. When I hit OK, it'll take me to the second part of the question. And then it, it's actually asking me for what the answer is. 5 plus negative 3 is equal to 2. I'll click on Check Answer. We got it. Okay. So that was problem number one. Let's try another problem. I'm going to go ahead and look at problem number three. Question three is talking about additive inverses. So again, you should have watched the video I made um, for homework 4-2K. Uh, if you haven't, I will link to it at the end of this video. But in that video, I talked about what additive inverses are. And they're basically numbers that when you add them together, they equal zero. So I'll give you some examples of additive inverses over here. Um, 12 and negative 12. 
uh, negative 40 and 40, um, 87 and negative 87. And you can see what's happening here. It's just the, what I, I, I call it the, the positive and negative version of, of the number. And, you know, if I give you $12 and then I take $12 away, you have no dollars, right? So all of these pairs of numbers, if you add them together, they're going to equal zero. If I go underwater 40 feet and then I come back up 40 feet, I'm now zero feet underwater. So we're just looking for the positive and negative version of, um, of a number. All right, the first thing I want you to notice about this question is it says select all um, pairs of additive inverses. That means there's more than one answer. And another clue that there's more than one answer is when digits gives you little boxes. See how these are boxes and they're not circles? That means there's going to be more than one answer. So as you do more and more questions, you'll get used to this. But if there was only one answer, they would give you circles. If there's more than one answer, they're going to give you boxes. This is really important because you might get one of the answers, think you've done it correctly, um, but you didn't click on all of the answers. And so you're going to get marked down for that. All right, let's look at the first choice. Uh, 5 and negative 4. Well, those aren't even the same number, right? We have a 5 and we have a negative 4. Um, if I add those together, I would get 1. Uh, look at choice B. That's what we're looking for. We have a 5 and a negative 5. If I give you $5 and I take away $5, you have no dollars. So that's going to be one of our choices. Um, look at choice C. If I give you 4 and I take away 4, you have none. So that is going to be one of our choices. Um, our last choice, uh, if I add 4 and 4 together, I'm going to get 8. Right? That's first grade math right there. So that is not an additive inverse. All right, so notice here we have two answers. Check answer. Got it. All right. So remember, additive inverses, they sum to zero. It's going to be the positive and negative version of a number. All right. The last question I'm going to go over is number five, and that involves those little positive and negatives. So <clears throat> this one's really straightforward. I'm, I'll, I'll do two like this. So it says use the model to find the sum two plus negative six. All right, remember a positive and a negative cancel each other out. So I can cross off one negative for each positive and then see what I'm left with once I run out of things to cross out. So if I cross out one positive, I can cross out one negative. I cross out a positive, I can cross out a negative. Now I have no more positive numbers to cross out, so now I look at what I'm left with. And what I'm left with is four negatives. Well, that is equal to the number negative 4. So 2 plus negative 6. Make sure you put the negative here. A lot of kids are going to just um, type in a 4. So um, on my keyboard, the negative sign, it's, it's the hyphen. It's next to the 0 at the top of the, board, uh, the keyboard. I'm going to put in negative 4, and we're good to go. All right, I'll do one more of this chip type of problem. They call them chips. I just call them positive and negatives. Let's try like uh, negative 13 plus, uh, what about this? Plus negative 6. I don't think we've seen an example like this yet. All right, I'm going to start with negative 13. I'm going to make 13 negatives. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This one is more negative than the rest. 11, 12, 13. And then I'm going to make six negatives over here. I'm going to use the same color because I'm still using negatives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, in this first example, I had positives and negatives, so I could cancel things out. Here, I don't have any positives. I can't cancel anything out. I only have negatives. I have a bunch of negatives, and I'm adding more negatives. So in this situation, you just count up all the negatives. I have 13 here. I have 16 here. That means I have, n I'm sorry, I have 6 here. That means I have 19 negative signs up here. You could actually count them one by one, and you would get 19. That means negative 13 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 19. Nothing cancels out at all. I only have negatives. All right, I want to show you some of the features that 
um, digits offers. Um, the first that is really important is similar question. Um, a lot of students, what they'll do is they'll, they just give you more than one try a lot of the times. And they'll stumble their way through it, they'll guess, they'll finally get through it, and then they'll just move on to the next one. <clears throat> well, if you got lucky or you guessed, then you don't know what you're doing. So if you got lucky or if you guess um, because you just get frustrated, I want you to hit similar question. It's going to bring up a similar question. Different problem, but same concept, same style. And then you can try it over and over again. Um, I had a student a couple years ago who really, she had a great saying, and she said, you know, Mr. Agnos, you don't practice a problem until you get it right. You practice a problem until you never get it wrong. There's really a big difference between the two. I can get lucky, I can guess, I can stumble through it, and eventually maybe get one problem right. But the key is to never get them wrong. Um, so similar question is really your friend. So if you're struggling with this type of question, you might hit similar question four or five times. Um, so I, I'm going to go ahead and type in the answer here. But maybe I want to I want to try a third problem. I can hit similar question again. Another thing that um, Digits offers is question help. So if you click on question help up here, it says help me solve this, and it'll actually help you solve this exact problem. If you click on this one, it won't give you credit for getting it correct. So that's fine. It'll walk you through it. But once you finish it, you're going to hit similar question. If you get that question correct, it'll give you credit. So that's one option. Help me solve this. Another option is view an example. And in this case, it will walk you through how to do this problem. So it shows you a first step. It shows you a second step and it shows you how to complete the problem. So um, it really does offer uh, quite a few things. Similar question, help me solve this exact problem or show me an example that's similar. Okay guys, this is my first sort of homework help video. Um, I recognize I'm a little blurry right now. That happens sometimes when I, when I come back out of the um, Full screen mode. Let me try. I'm gonna try that one more time. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna come back. I'm blurry. Okay. Um, hopefully you found this video helpful. I'm gonna link either here or here to the lesson on this unit. Um, and please email me if you have questions. Thanks, guys.